Come on, kids. I'm Priya Caleb. I'm Priya Clyde. And I'm Ateliana. Mawel here. And I'm Priya Jimmy. We're so glad to see you here again for another episode of Next Gen Live. To be part of a next gen small group by Zoom? If you are 7 to 12 years old, you can be part of an online squad or small group by registering on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Hope to see you there! <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Kuya Morris. You are joining us live via Facebook and YouTube, and we are also in Zoom. For those who are using uh, devices, please make sure to check your sound and your internet connection if it's a bit slow. Okay, it might be the internet connection that is causing it. For those in Zoom, you can turn off your webcam. Okay, it will help uh, lessen the burden to your internet connection so it will be more faster. Okay, let me just uh, welcome for those who are joining us for the very first time, whether it's in Zoom, in Facebook, and also in YouTube. And we would like to remind all of you on April 2, we will have the Big Adventure Games. Our series, Victorious, that will be at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can join us at CCF Center. You can join us on Facebook and YouTube via live stream or for kids ages 7 to 12 via Zoom by messaging us at CCF Next Gen on Facebook to sign up. Please do invite your friends. Admission is free. And if you are on Facebook or YouTube, please use the comment section. Type your nickname first before your comment. Please do like and share this live video and share it to other families as well for those in youtube just a gentle reminder you have to click the community tab there you will find our comment section so you can leave your comments there and i would like to take this opportunity to say hi we have uh, everyone on facebook saying good morning hi everyone we have nigel redaon joining us we have ira we also have Naomi joining us and we have Shekaina. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning and we are glad that you are here today as we learn a brand new lesson here at CCF Center. Okay, so let us continue with our uh, time together this morning. Okay, and I would like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to join me as we sing our praises and worship for God this morning in four. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles And 
Praise God for that wonderful worship. If you have just joined us, I'm Kuya Morris, and we would like to thank all of you for joining us this morning. Is this your first time joining us via Zoom, via live stream on Facebook and YouTube? And today, our lesson is this. The big idea is be victorious. God keeps His promises. Once again, we would like to remind all of you, we have the 10 a.m. and also the 3 p.m. service. You can join us online or on-site at CCF Center, online on Facebook and YouTube. And we have small groups online via Zoom as well for ages 7 to 12 years old. So, right now, if you are ready for our lesson, I would like to ask all of you to think about this. What were people's reaction after you broke your promise? This can be uh, with your parents, your brothers and your sisters, your friends, your relatives, even your teachers. Why do you believe people act as they do when you broke your promise? Why do you think so? Okay, and if you are ready, let's get ready together to watch our Bible lesson in 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's watch this. Come on, Max. You can do it. Come on. I'm really tired. My legs are in pain. No, you can do it. Come on. Remember our lesson last week? Our, les our lesson? Yeah, lesson last week. Oh, oh, you mean next gen's lesson? Yep, next gen's lesson. It was about nothing is impossible with God. Right? That's correct. They keep doing it? Yeah. Oh. You can do this. <laughs> with God's help, of course, you can do that, Lex. <laughs> I can do this! All right, all right, you can pass it on, Sylvia. Okay. okay, great job. Now, as promised, we will get your favorite cake. Mango tart cake? Mango tart cake. Yeah! <laughs> yes, you're welcome. Thank you, Dad. Mm -hmm. Actually, Dad, about the lesson last week, um, what happened after like that battle where the sun stood still? Hmm, that's a good question. Oh, where did this? Ooh, it's a map. Happy map. Look, what does this mean? It's a clue to what, though? Let's find out the answer. Mm hmm. In the Bible. Oh! Hey kids, I'm your Kuya Jesse. And I'm Matt Alexi. Come with us as we learn in today's episode of Next Gen Live! Before we read what happened to Joshua and the Israelites after the Lord gave them victory over their enemies, let's check if you know how many tribes are there in Israel. Sure, Dad. Um, wait though. Tribes is kind of a big word, so... Let me help you guys. Tribes means a traditional group of people divided into families or communities. And there's usually a leader assigned in each tribe, just like in Israel. Thanks, Lex. Now, do you know how many tribes were there in Israel? Hmm. Clue, if you know the number of sons Jacob has, then you should know the answer. Letter A, is it six tribes? Letter B, is it eight tribes? Or is it letter C, 12 tribes? I don't have enough fingers for that. That's right, it's letter C, 12 tribes. Jacob had 12 sons. You have 12 sons? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what happened to Joshua and the Israelites after that amazing battle. Do you have your Bible with you? I do, I do. How about you kids? I'm sure you have it too. Now, let's turn to Joshua chapter 13. While you're searching in your Bibles, let me tell you what happened after the battle. Joshua and the Israelites continued to conquer the land, defeating king after king. In the end, they defeated 31 kings and conquered much land through the help of God. Hey, 31? 31 kings? Like 31 kingdoms? They had, they had like 31 battles and wars? I know it's a lot, Lex, but God made it all possible. Ooh. Wait, with all of the like kings that they overthrew and all the lands that they conquered, what did they do with all of that? 
Let's continue reading. Let's. All right. When the land was captured, Joshua was already old. Oh, God told Joshua that there was still more land to conquer. So, God said that they could start dividing the land to the Israelites, including those they had not conquered yet. Joshua started dividing the land by their tribes. Wait, how does that work? Oh, I think it's better if I show you. Ooh. This is the whole land that the Israelites conquered. That's a lot of land. It is. Let's continue. Joshua carefully followed the instructions God gave to Moses regarding all the boundaries to be given to each tribe. Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh claimed the land of the Amorites along the Jordan River instead of the land in Canaan. This part of the land was the portion they asked Moses because this land was good for their animals. Mm. Now, how many tribes were left? This is a math question. Oh, um, if there were 12 tribes in all, then two and a half tribes already claimed the land. So there are like nine and a half tribes left? Well, that's correct, Lex. Oof. <laughs> now, the remaining nine and a half tribes received their land by casting a lot. A lot. Casting lots. What's, 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 what's casting lots? Well, good question, Lex. Nothing is known about the actual casting of lots done during that time, but there's a lot of possible things. For example, they could have been flat stones. Where do these come from? Sticks of different sizes. Where do these come from? Or maybe some kind of dice. But the exact nature is unknown. Well, I think I get it. It's like, oh, it's like, um, it's like flipping a coin, right? Wow, I'm bad at that. But then, it's like flipping a coin in, in our time. That's right, Lex. Casting lots assured that their part was allotted by God. It also protected the Israelites' leaders from any favoritism. Hmm. Now, let's see how the land was divided. Ooh, whoa, whoa. So, Dad, I noticed that some parts are bigger than the others. I, I felt like there was no favoritism here. Good observation, Lex. It's simply because there are more people in that tribe. Mm. And for other tribes, they had more animals to take care of. Huh? And that's why their share was bigger than others. But all the 12 tribes had a place to stay. Hmm. Wait a second. One, two, three. Now, I feel like one of them's missing. Like, am I counting that right? You're right, Lex. But that's another story for another lesson. Mm. Giving the Israelites the land of Canaan was one of the promises the Lord gave to them. Even though it took many, many years, it was worth the wait. And that's why the Lord wanted them to conquer the land where they can live and settle. God was with them every step of the way and led them to victory. God kept His promise of always being with them. <gasps> That's amazing! You know, I think it's the perfect time for... Pop Pop, Pop, Pop Quizzes! Pop Quizzes! I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one. How many promises did the Lord keep? A. One promise. B. Most of his promises. Or C. All of his promises. Of course, God keeps all his promises. <laughs> it's letter C. Woo! Question number two. What must we do while waiting for God's promise to be fulfilled? A. Fully trusting and obeying the Lord. B. Obeying all of the Lord's commands. C. Praying and reading his word. Or D, all of the above. Oh. Right, kids? It's letter D. We Ooh. must do all these things while waiting for God's promise to be fulfilled. Even though it took years for the Israelites to get their piece of land, God was true to His promises. And He kept it in His perfect time. 
That's the big idea for today. God keeps His promises. And that's exactly what our memory verse says too. Let's do it with actions, guys. Joshua chapter 21, verse 45. The Lord kept all the good promises He made to the Israelites, and every one of them came true. Joshua chapter 21, verse 45. God keeps all of His promises. When we have sinned, the Lord promised us that He will send someone to save us. And many centuries after He made these promises, He sent Jesus to keep His promise. By dying on the cross and rising again from the dead, Jesus saved us from sin, keeping God's promises. God also promises us eternal life with Him if we admit our sin, believe in Jesus, and follow Him for the rest of our lives. Would you like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? If yes, pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I know I have sinned. Please forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross for me and rose again from the grave to save me. For what you have done for me, I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you just pray that prayer from your heart, then we welcome you to God's, God's family. family. <laughs> I hope you can listen and learn a lot. Share what you have learned in the Victorious Padlet page by going through the link below or scanning the QR code. You know, Dad, I wonder, what's the next lesson going to be about? Like, you have so many Bible stories that you're stuck in. Yeah. Well, how about I give you a little sneak peek? Mm -hmm. Just close your eyes and open them once you hear me snap my fingers. Okay, all right, all right, ready. Okay. Ah! Ah! This place is, it's beautiful. Like, where is this place? Um, who does it belong to? Well, it belongs to a very special person who loves the Lord. We will learn more about him in the next episode of Next Gen, Gen Live. Bye! Hey, Next Gen families, how about spending time sharing with each other your answers to our discussion questions? Because a family that shares with each other stays together and grows in the Lord together. Let's use these questions to help us discuss what we learned in today's lesson. Have, have a great, great time discussing! discussing. Want to be part of a next-gen small group by Zoom? If you are 7 to 12 years old, you can be part of an online squad or small group by registering on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Hope to see you there! <laughs> Praise God for that wonderful lesson for this morning. Our big idea, be victorious. God keeps His promises. Say it one more time with me. In 4, 3, 2, 1, be victorious. God keeps His promises. And our memory verse is from Joshua chapter 21, verse 45. Let's say it together. The Lord kept all the good promises He had made to the Israelites. Every one of them came true. So I hope the same thing is happening to you if you believe that with god just like our lesson last week nothing is impossible don't forget to get a copy of your grow journals and we also have parent guides with worksheets and games you can access the lesson via our facebook viber youtube instagram and twitter social media platforms now we would like to invite all of you our friends on facebook and youtube please do stay we will discuss more about our lesson okay and for those on zoom get ready to join your squads for those who are joining us for the very first time you will join the hello hub so have a wonderful time during your breakout for those in zoom and on facebook and youtube let's get ready to discuss some more the things that we can learn from our lesson for today okay friends on zoom you have all you have to do when you see the join breakout button just click it
Okay. Right then, we don't have a teacher Elaine, so I assigned you with a different group. Same with uh, Miana, friends, and Janjan and Katkat. -Kat. Okay, click the join breakout button. Please join where we have assigned you. Okay, so let's discuss what we can learn more about our lesson. Remember, we asked you. Okay, let me uh, just check our friends there you go uh, precious you can join same with anton and friends we don't have uh, teacher elaine and teacher alice this morning so please just uh, click the join breakout button and join the group that you are assigned to okay thank you okay so this is the question that we asked all of you earlier what were people's reaction after you broke your promise? And why do you believe people act as they do? Think about it if you were in the place of the person that you gave a promise. Why do you think they would react that way? Why? Because we are talking about in our lesson, when we ask something from God and when we read it in His Word and we believe that... Uh, he will give it to us. What will you do? Okay. We have uh, Yoj with us. We also have Lay joining. Good morning. That's via Facebook. Okay, friends on YouTube, you can always use our um, community tab to send in your comments for our lesson and discussion. We also have Kate. As always, we are glad you have a Rivera with us. We have Sam, Sam Rivera joining us this afternoon. Okay, so as we continue to talk about our lesson, let me just ask this question. How did you know about Next Zen Facebook Live? Is it through your family members, through social media? Where? Let me uh, just start off our uh, discussion for this morning. When I broke a promise, when I told my mom that I will review and she found out that I did not review for the exam but instead fall asleep in the bed where I was preparing when I was in high school, my mom was so disappointed. I can see in her face that... Uh, she was so upset I broke my promise that I will review even without her being there all the time. Okay? It made her upset. I believe the reason why she was upset when I broke my promise that I will review is that um, it showed her that she cannot trust me to do the things that I can already do by myself. Thank you very much for uh, letting us know, Shekaina. Your nickname is Kate. So share your answers. What were people's reaction? This can be your parents, your brothers and sisters, your friends. Okay, and parents and guardians, you can also share your answers. Why? It will help the kids the children to understand that we too also have this uh, experience that a day two can learn from. Giselle said, promise not to purchase again, but I did it again and my father got mad. Wow, I can relate to, uh, to the father of Giselle. Why? Uh, when our kids said, um, they're uh, four and uh, four and turning six. We would go to the supermarket or to the mall, and they would tell us that uh, that's the last time they would ask to buy some toys. So we would buy it for them. Then after a few minutes moving along, they saw something that they like. They would really uh, keep on asking 
either me or their mom to buy them that another toy. While we, your parents, can buy these things for you, the truth is we are also trying to teach you discipline that uh, we don't just buy stuff, right? Uh, for because we want it, we should buy stuff first, especially if you know if we really need it. That's what we would like to uh, teach all of you. Naomi said, I'm not actually sure. Caleb said, me too. Eight said, uh, angry. Zach said, I promise that I would not be stubborn, but I was stubborn and mom was sad and disappointed. That's right. If we are stubborn, our parents will really get sad, right? And uh, sometimes... Uh, this stubbornness comes not because um, we cannot do it. We show stubbornness because we have something else in mind that we would rather do, right? And that can lead to broken promises. Another good example that we can learn from. Why do you think... Uh, when we say we will follow rules, when we go outside in the streets, there are stoplights, crossing signs, or even uh, garbage cans. And yet, sometimes we are tempted or we even fall into doing the act of throwing the garbage just anywhere, crossing the street, right? And telling ourselves, well, there's no one looking, right? But we promised when we pray to God, Prince, uh, you can join. I have assigned you to Teacher Sonia for today, okay? Teacher Elaine is not here for today. He uh, took a leave for, uh, for today. Okay, so you just click the join breakout button. So you can join the small group. The breakout group. Okay, you can join uh, Teacher Sonia. Okay. This one, let me uh, read another answer. When I promise that I will listen to the story but did not listen. That's right. For someone who is telling a story and we keep on getting distracted with a lot of different things, it can make someone feel that uh, they are not important, right? That you do not believe what they are telling if you do not give them your attention, right? That could be it it can make them sad because they don't feel that uh, they are important. Prince, you can join Teacher Sonia. Just click the Join Breakout button. Okay? Teacher Elaine is not here today. That's why I assigned you to Teacher Sonia for this morning. Okay, let's see some more answers. Share your answers. It's okay if you would like to share more than one answer. Why? From all the experience that we have, we can learn a lot more if we get to talk about it. Okay, and I also encourage you to do the same by sharing it to your families. Why? It will help you understand each other. Uh, Caleb, to join the Zoom meeting, all you have to do is to sign up. Okay, you need to sign up. Let me just get the link for everyone. If you register today, by next week, you'll be able to join. Okay, friends on YouTube, 
I went to the community tab and sent the link if you would like to join our uh, small group for kids ages 7 to 12 years old via Zoom. Okay, register today and you can join the Zoom meeting as we confirm your details for next week. Okay, so that you won't miss anything when you join. You can start fresh. Okay. Let me uh, see here. Yes, Kate. We will not forget. So, friends, let's not forget the nickname of Kate. Okay. So, let's continue. Let's continue. I have the second question again. If you have another answer for this first question, what were people's reaction after you broke your promise? And why do you believe people act as they do? You can send it again. Okay. And you can also talk about it within your families. You can ask them if they are a bit shy to uh, share it with you. Especially your parents. It would be good, kids, if you understand where your parents are coming from when they broke a promise to you. Right? The same way they too can have that opportunity to understand why you did break a promise in the past. Lay said, when I broke my promise, my father and mother got mad. But I finished my computer science. Wow, that's right. Thank you very much for sharing, Lay. Indeed, our parents will be really upset if we uh, made the promise. Remember, it is us telling them that we will do it. How would you feel? When you pray to God and you ask God, and God broke His promise. But we know that God does not bring or, or break His promises. Because when He makes promises, this is for our own good. Okay, friends, let me uh, check that again. Let's just uh, help friends for a while. Can you try joining in again, friends? If this happens again, okay. Friends, try logging out first, then log back in. I think uh, there is something happening with your Zoom. Log out from Zoom, then log back in, then I'll assign you again to Teacher Sonia. Thank you. Okay. Let me, uh, you're welcome, Caleb, and I hope that you can uh, join us for next week via Zoom, and we're glad that uh, you can do it. Okay, let me proceed to our next discussion question. This is wonderful, this question. How will having a promise-keeping God in your life help you to own let me read that again. How will having a promise-keeping God in your life help you hold on to His Word and believe that He will keep it? What will you do differently next time when you make a promise? What will you do differently next time you make a promise? Okay. So let me share my answer for this one again kids and parents you can share your answers you can talk about this with your family okay and you can share it via the comment section on facebook also in youtube but in youtube you need to go to our community tab and leave a comment there and i will read it and share it to everyone joining us online okay so this one how will having a promise-keeping God in your life help you hold on to His Word and believe that He will keep it? What will you do differently next time you make a promise? The first part for this one. Remember that uh, we can learn from the stories, the experience of people where God gave His promise, especially the Israelites, God's people. 
in the Bible where he kept it. From there, when I read one of his promises, I would already know that he is able to do it. And what will I do differently next time I make a promise? Well, first and foremost, I will be careful in giving a promise. Not that I would not make a promise anymore, but rather, I will pray and ask God's wisdom. I will ask the Holy Spirit to help me. That when I make a promise, it is something that I can actually do. And also, it is something, okay, aside from being able to keep it, it is something that I will ask the Holy Spirit to help me keep it. Not by my own strength, but by God's strength. Okay, Lizelle said, will promise not to do my sin again. That's right. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, one of the things that we can actually do is when we know already that this is a sin, for example, we lied to our parents, then we stay away from it. And when we are tempted, we pray to God, we ask strength. Okay, let, uh, let us make this shorter. Uh, if you will make a promise, okay, for, for everyone. If you will make a promise. Now that you have God. Who keeps his promises? What will you do differently to keep your own promise? Is this short enough? Uh, if you will make a promise now, What will you do differently? Okay. Uh, let me give an example. Before, when I make a promise, okay, I do not think first, but instead, I would jump right into it in giving a promise. I will tell my parents if they ask me to clean up my room, I would say, I will clean it without thinking of whether I can do it in my schedule. Like for example, if I have to review for exams, I have to uh, prepare if I have a practice for sports, then I should consider these things and ask for wisdom first, right? This one. Let me uh, read. Zach said, God never breaks his promises and I can trust him and can obey him. Yes, we can always make it simple. When we promise, make a promise, let's think of a promise that we can actually keep. That's something that we can do differently. What can you do differently when you make a promise? So that's very important. So think about it. What will you do right so you can share it with your family also you can share it together you can talk about it together adriana agrees with god uh, with zach that's right god never breaks his promise that's something that we can think about another that will help us when we think of god keeping his promises Whenever God makes a promise, it is always for our good. It has nothing that will bring us down or make us feel bad if we receive His word. Right? Just like in our story. 
when God made the promise, He made sure that He keeps it. Right? Zach said, I will try my best not to break my promise. Praise God for that. It is always good that we try rather than saying, I cannot do it even without even giving an effort. So, while you think some more answers for this, I would like to uh, invite all of you to join me. We will play a game to help us remember some of the things that we have learned from our lesson. Okay, and if you are ready, okay, this comes from the Bible lesson that we have learned earlier. Okay, from the Bible verses. And I will put up to help you the Bible verse where you can sh uh, search your answers. If you are ready, let's play in 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, this one. How will, um, let me see, let's play. The first one, what did God commanded Joshua to do with the remaining unclaimed land in Canaan in Joshua chapter 13? Verse 7, A, divide the land to the nine tribes. B, give the land to the western half-tribe of Manasseh. C, divide the land to the nine tribes and the western half-tribe. Or D, he did nothing. Again, what did God commanded Joshua to do? Let's see. If you were able to uh, remember the things that we learned from the lesson. And you can open your Bibles and go and check and uh, write your answers. Okay, it's letter C. The answer is letter C. Okay, next one. What did the daughters of Zelophehad ask Eleazar the priest in Joshua chapter 17 verse 4? A. To give land like the men receive as Moses promised. B. To give land like the men receive as Joshua promised. C. To get recognized as children of Manasseh. Or D. Where did their father go? A, B, C, or D. What's your answer? The answer is to give land like the men received by the men. Okay, this one complete the memory verse. The big idea for this morning, be victorious, God blank his promises. A delays, B keeps, C forgets, or D hides. A, B, C, or D. What's your answer? The answer is B, keeps. There you go. Thank you for playing that game. We will have another one. Let me just read some answers. For those who just joined us, this is our discussion question connected to our lesson. How will having a promise-keeping God in your life help you hold on to His Word and believe that He will keep it? And what will you do differently next time you make a promise? Let me just go back. And read the answer of one of our friends. This is from Kate. Talk to God to help and give me wisdom so I can do things. That's hard. That's right. We ask for help from God because He knows how to keep promises. And by His Spirit, He will guide us so that we can do these things as well. We can keep our promises. Okay, we can learn from God. Okay, and if you are ready, I have one more game to help us 
If you are ready, give me a thumbs up and we will play our last game for this morning to help us remember all that we have learned from our Bible lesson. Let's get ready in 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's play! <laughs> Okay. What did Joshua ask the Israelites in Joshua chapter 18 verse 3? Is it A. Why do they feast without taking the land? B. Why do they wait so long to take the land? C. Why do they hide from their enemies? Or D. Why do they make friends with their enemies? A, B, C, or D. Okay, here comes the answer. The answer is B. Why do they wait so long to take the land? Next up, where did Eleazar, Joshua, and the leaders of Israel meet while dividing the land in Joshua chapter 19 verse 51? Is it A, before the tribes of Israel? B, before the council of elders? C, before the Lord at the foot of Mount Horeb, or D, before the Lord at the entrance of the Tent of Meeting? A, B, C, or D? Okay, it's the answer is D, before the Lord, the front of the tent of meeting. Now, complete the memory verse from Joshua chapter 21 verse 45. The Lord kept all the blank blank he had made to the Israelites. Every one of them came through. Two blanks, A, nice things, B, good gifts, C, good promises, or D, cool stuff, A, B, C, or D. What's your answer? The answer is C, good promises. Thank you for playing. Praise God for that. And you know what? We also have every Sunday a rerun of our live stream. And in the link of our rerun video of our next and live that we are doing this morning, you can actually play the game again to help you. Okay, to help you remember the things that we have learned from the Bible lesson. Isn't that wonderful? I hope this will help you really remember. And aside from remembering the things that we see from our Bible lessons, we will also put it into action. Just like our big idea for this morning, be victorious. God keeps His promises right god keeps his promises but god would also make sure that these promises will always be for our good and remember from our lesson last week god with god what okay with god nothing is impossible so we can really have victory if we know that with God nothing is impossible, then we are assured that God keeps His promises just like what He did for the Israelites when He promised them that He will give him the land flowing with milk and honey. At the end of our lesson, all land were divided among them. Praise God for that. Praise God for that wonderful reminder and from our memory verse. In Joshua chapter 21, verse 45, it says here, The Lord kept all good promises He had made to the Israelites. Every one of them came true. Let's say it one more time. Joshua chapter 21, verse 45, The Lord 
kept all the good promises he had made to the Israelites, every one of them came true. So, don't forget on April 2, I would like to ask all of you to invite your friends. Admission is free. Okay, on April 2, Sunday, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., we will have it on site, online on Facebook and YouTube, and also via Zoom for kids ages 7 to 12 years old. So we are very excited for this, and I hope that you will be able to join us then. Don't forget to volunteer in Kids Church. Message us so we can send you the link for the volunteer application form on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as you can join us. This morning, we will have at uh, around 12 p.m. our face-to-face uh, -face ministry orientation. But we also have it, the link for the video orientation when you get the volunteer application. Okay, and we are looking for volunteers for our Next Gen Live online community. You can be the next host of our program. Chat support, tech support, and also a squad leader. You need to be part of a small group and also completing or have completed GLC1. Be a life shaper, build the future now, scan the QR code, or Follow us at CCF Next Gen on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay, so before I continue, I would like to take this opportunity to ask you, what is your favorite part of our program? Is it the games, the singing and dancing, the Bible lesson, the gospel? Or if you like everything, please do leave a comment about it. Okay, and Please make sure to get your Grow Journals. It will help guide you as you review, as you learn more during the week, our lesson for today, which is be victorious. Okay, God keeps His promises. And parents, we have Parents Guide with worksheets and games. Stay connected with us by scanning the QR codes for Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and also Twitter and we have this, this discussion questions. You can talk more with your families. Again, make sure that you share your thoughts as a family to learn and grow in God's Word together. If you have prayer requests, you can now send it via our chat. And we will pray for each and everyone as we close our time together. Okay, so send in your prayer request and we will have it as we close our time together with a word of prayer. And I would like to ask all of you, will you join us next week and invite a friend? Is it a yes, a no, a uh, maybe? Zach said, please pray that uh, no more satin and everyone to be good and no more bullies and no more litter and for the baby in mommy's tummy yes zach we will pray for your request uh that's something that zach has been praying for each and every time he is joining us and we are so glad that uh, we can always pray for zach and for um his entire family okay so join me as we close our time together with a word of prayer, let us pray. Father God, thank you for the wonderful reminder that you indeed is a promise-keeping God, that with you, nothing is impossible. But truly, we have to start by repenting from our sins. Lord, we pray for Zach's request that uh, we... As followers of your son Jesus Christ will do all good things that blesses and honors your name Lord we pray also that uh, people will learn to put the garbage where they should be so that there will be no more flooding no more clogging of our drainage system and we also pray 
for the baby inside uh, Zach's mom's tummy, Lord God, that you will keep the baby safe, that you will allow the baby grow strong and healthy, and one day become a wonderful follower of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we also pray for the request of Adriana that uh, the love that you have for each and every one of us is the kind of love that we will also share to each and every person, whether it's our family member, it is with our friends, Lord God, we will always, always show it, give it back to you and to each and every one around us. Lord, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, this is Kuya Morris. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget, we still have the 3 p.m. service. If you know some friends and family members who have not joined us this morning, tell them. Join us later at 3 p.m. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Take care.
Hello, I'm Petit. And I'm Dominic. We grew up with a belief system that was centered around traditions and compliance, where there was no intentional discipleship at home, and family times were mostly spent in business or recreation. Fortunately today, there are a lot of devotional books available for children. So we don't need to think about what we should teach our children. We can just read the verse of the day and the reflection. Then we just personalize by asking simple questions to our children. Sometimes our eldest, when she's able to obey and share with her baby sister, she would ask us, Mom, is that what God likes? So we're seeing that she's developing this personal desire to please God and raising them to be good children is no longer as daunting. So encourage other families to keep reading God's Word with your children. Make it a habit and don't be discouraged. Let's keep journeying together and discipling our families. Through Jesus, we can make an impact across generations. This is it! That moment we've all been waiting for! Finally, after two long years, we can sing together again, dance together again, play games together, and worship the Lord together. Face to face! Face to face? Does that mean we don't have to be on screen anymore? Not anymore. We'll be together again yeah. here at the CCF Center starting Sunday, April 17 at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. at the CCF Center. Woohoo! Next Gen Face to Face Kids Church at last! For all you kids and preteens from ages 4 all the way through 12, together again here at Next Gen. See you! What is a Life Shaper? Life Shapers are awesome people who willingly give their time and use their talents and skills to serve God in Next Gen Kids Church. I can clap my hands and dance around from my head to my toes. Come on now. I'm gonna let my light shine so everything I do and every word I say It shows this world uh, uh. That I have Jesus in me Oh, oh, I'm gonna serve Oh, oh, I'm gonna serve Oh, oh, I'm gonna serve My friends, my family, and my Gen Small Group by Zoom? If you are 7 to 12 years old, you can be part of an online squad or small group by registering on the link in the description or scanning this QR code. Hope to see you there! <laughs> Hi, that's 
Gen Parents. We are Derek Dulay and Irene Dulay, your fellow Next Gen Parents. And we are also volunteer at Next Gen. We're here to share with you how we can maximize the use of the Parent Guide. Yes, the Parent Guide. We as parents are called to be the disciples of our own children. However, are you like me who sometimes find it difficult to know what to do? Sometimes we don't know where to start and how to follow through. But praise God for providing us with Next Gen, a ministry that walks alongside us, families, and discipling our children. And good thing, Next Gen has provided us with a guide to help us develop healthy times with God as a family. You may view and download it in the link you see on the screen. This family material will help our family dig more deeply into the Bible lesson and apply the lessons in our lives. Now, let's lead. L-E-E-D. As we conduct our family time together. What does lead stand for? L is for lead. E, emphasize. A, ask questions. And D, do. Lead your family in prayer. Lead in navigating the Bible and read aloud the assigned passages. Reading aloud provides several learning opportunities for children of all ages. We, as parents, usually read the passages aloud. But if your children can already read, then ask them to read the passages too. Yes, and next, emphasize. We emphasize the big ideas in memory verse. Explain the meaning and implication of the big idea and the memory verses in their lives. Try to explain the big ideas and memory verse at the level that your children will be able to understand. As parents, we are the best people to know how to do it. Ask questions. Asking questions allows our children to make connections and thus deepen their understanding. Questions promote active learning. It is so helpful that a few questions have been provided and at the same time, we add more and contextualize the questions to our situation. In our experience as a family, these questions have helped us a lot in being more intentional in knowing more about our children. Do. Do the activities. Family activities such as object lessons, family games, worksheets, and kids' journals are provided to help your family apply the principle of each lesson. These activities are not only fun but are sure to achieve the objective of the lesson. That's right! <laughs> to further seal our family's learning, we would read the godly response. Or sometimes, we would also ask one of our children to read it. The next part is one of our favorites. We are given suggested action points. Sometimes we add more and then what we do is go back to this list and check those we have done so far. Yes. As a parent, the one desire I have is to be able to share the gospel to my children. Sometimes I also need some guidance on how to do it. I am so glad to discover that the Parents' Guide connects the lesson with how I can share the gospel to my children. Besides being a vessel of the opportunity for my children to respond to God's gift of salvation, I also model to them how to share the gospel to others. We talk about whom to share the gospel and write their names in the box. The Parents' Guide is fully packed with fun and meaningful activities. The last page shows other resources that we can use for our family time. A question you might ask is how frequent should we hold our family time? It's suggested that and the idea is to do it every day for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes. Most families do it three times a week for 20 to 30 minutes per session and that is also good. As part of God's family, we can trust that we have the support of our next gen and we can depend on them to help us if we need guidance and materials. Now, we are ready for our family time this week. God bless!